All right, everyone, welcome back to Be Mother Live. Um, been a while since we did a live episode, but um, I thought this was a pretty good one because, as you can see, finally, The Rock has come back to Be Mother Reviews. And this statue from PCS, no longer Pop Culture Shock, they are now known as Premium Collectibles Studio. So, a little bit of a name change, but same company that you know over the years. Um, okay, so quick recap of the line. And once again, I'm sorry that the stream started a bit late. Uh, a little bit of technical difficulties happening here, but uh, hopefully everything's okay now. Quick recap of the line so far. It started off in great fashion with the Ultimate Warrior. Then it followed up with that wheeling, dealing, kiss stealing son of a gun, Ric Flair. Um, so, and then of course we've got The Rock. And we know that the next one in the line is The Undertaker, the dead man himself. And announced in the uh, Facebook group by Ant Adams, one of the co-owners of PCS. After The Undertaker, already in the works, is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm definitely jacked up for that. He's maybe my favorite wrestler of all time. Um, at least in my top three, for sure. So, I want to know from you, if you're watching live, um, which wrestlers do you want to see next after Stone Cold? I've got a top three that I'll share with you at the end of the show. Um, but I want to know who you want. So put it in the comments, put it in the chat. Um, I also want to know what you think is the best era of wrestling. Is it the old school, Hogan, Savage? Is it the Attitude Era? Is it the Ruthless Aggression Era? Actually, I take that back. It doesn't matter what you think because the Attitude Era, in my opinion, is the best era of wrestling and The Rock was a huge part of that. So... Um, we are going to do a full review today. Sculpting design, paint, production quality. So bear with me here. It's the first time doing a full review live. Um, so everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's again, sorry for uh, starting a little bit late here. Uh, quickly, before we get too far, I want to throw up some dimensions. Uh, I know a lot of people like to know. Shipper box, pretty big actually. Um, for a statue this size, it was a lot bigger than I was expecting, but there are two torsos for this statue. I'll show you the other one a bit later, uh, so maybe not totally surprising. Um, now, the statue itself. Okay, the modern version that you see here. About 28 inches tall there to the top of his hand. Scale on this, I think, is pretty good. The rock is uh, six foot five around there. Uh, this statue, about 19 and a half to 20 inches from um, head to toe here. Uh, so pretty accurate in terms of height and scale. Uh, I think it looks pretty good from that uh, perspective. And I mentioned that there is a swap out torso. Um, old school rock. I'll show you that again later. A little bit shorter. He's got his arms down to the side. So he's only 24 inches high um, from the base to the top of his head. Okay, let's kick things off here with uh, sculpt and design. All right, so design-wise, you know, it follows the other characters released so far with just this round pedestal base. In fact, this base kind of round like a pie, and we all know how The Rock loves pie, not strudel, pie. So the only difference here is uh, the ring post out in front. Um, so that, and the, and the ring, uh, the ropes and the turnbuckles. So that's the only difference in the look and, or style of the base. Uh, the Rock himself, this is his signature ring entrance pose. Um, so basically, uh, let me get the picture up right there. So that's basically your statue right here. He com comes into the ring, he stands on the ropes, raises his arm to the crowd and everyone goes wild. Uh, so there's your statue, very iconic pose for the rock. I think they did made a good choice there. Um, this statue is sculpted by a man named Hossein Diba, who has done the others in the line. I expect to do the future statues in this line. He's amazing. Um, he did an incredible job here. I mean, you can see, you know, the iconic rock outfit. Nice sculpted details there with the wrinkles and folds and things like that. Um, but what stands out to me on this piece is the portrait. I mean, this is basically right off the television screen and in your home. You have your own personal little mini rock here. It's so photorealistic. Um, and even better than that, I think, the skin texture. 
The skin texture on the statue looks insane. Um, so realistic. I think it's probably as good as it can get for a polystone statue. I mean, aside from going to that hyper-realistic route with the uh, silicone stuff like Queen Studios is doing, I think this is, again, about as good as you can get. Great casting job there, too, and to bring out all those details. There's no little extra nubs or anything left behind. Um, so really, really nice job on this sculpt. So the other thing is the tattoo. This big tattoo on his chest is slightly etched into his skin uh, so that you can see... Uh, in between the painted areas, it's a little bit recessed, and I think that's okay. Uh, it's not that noticeable. If that's what it took to get the paint looking good, uh, I can live with it. So let's take a look at some of the up-close sculpted details here. Look at the vein work in his arm there. You know, very realistic muscle detail on this guy. I mean, it's not a superhero physique. This is a real person, and it looks like it. Great job there. Great portrait again. Here's the, his signature open back boots. Got the rock logo on his shorts there. That is actually sculpted into his pants. You got the lacing detail, the rope detail. Again, look at his fist, the veins, the muscle there in his forearm. It's very realistic looking. And the skin texture, check that out. I mean, you may have to see it with your own eyes, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully that's coming through okay because it looks absolutely incredible. The muscle detail on his leg, very realistic again. Look at the texturing there. They just did a great job with it. Here's the tattoo. You look close. Again, you can see it is slightly etched into his skin. And the portrait. I mean, that that's the rock. That's basically right off the screen. Love it. So amazing job on this sculpt. I think uh, really not much to complain about here. This is, as I said, this is the rock right here. So let's move on. We're going to talk about paint. Okay, so pretty basic paint job here on this statue, I think, for the most part. Uh, the base, just a flat red. You got a flat black and then a flat gray. And then his outfit is just basically plain black. Uh, that's one area where I think they may have been able to improve is especially on the boots. They're mostly a glossy black, which is fine, but his laces are also painted glossy black, which I don't know how accurate that would be. They could have brought those out a little bit with maybe a different sheen on that black, but it's okay. I think it's, I can live with it. A little bit more of a matte finish on the knee pads there. But what was going to make or break this piece was going to be the skin tones. Uh, I remember when I first saw it at San Diego Comic-Con, it was like in a movie when a guy turns around and sees, you know, a beautiful woman in the crowd and there's like golden rays emanating from her and you hear these angels singing in the background. That's what it was like when I saw the statue. It just absolutely blew me away. But as soon as I picked my jaw up off the floor, you know, the first thing that went through my mind is, are they going to be able to produce the paint in the factory? And I think overall... I'm pretty pleased with it. It's about as good as you can expect on the skin tones from a factory. I think even even better than that. Uh, it's really, really well done. It might not be 100% up to the prototype, but as a statue collector, I think that's pretty well expected. The portrait looks good. I have seen one person post some googly eyes. Um, that's unfortunate. Hopefully he gets a replacement, but my eyes are good, and that's really key because uh, you don't want googly eyes. It can just ruin everything else about the statue. Really nice job on this tattoo here. Uh, no green slipping out onto the skin where it shouldn't be. They did a great job with that. The tattoo on his arm is a sticker or a decal or decal, as we say here in Alberta. Um, so, you know, not much to complain about with that. So that looks pretty good. The lips, teeth, everything looks pretty good. So let's take a look at some of the close-up paint details. Here's the boot. Again, it's pretty much 100% glossy black, and I think they could have mixed it up a little bit there. The matte finish on the knee pad. Okay, we got the logo on the back, as I mentioned, sculpted into his suit, but painted silver. Looks good. Similar on the front with the rock writing. The tattoo looks really good. Very clean paint job there.
And again, look at the portrait, very well done. The lips, look at the skin tones, very subtle shading in there. I think they did a really nice job with that. So overall, I think the paint job, really, really nice. Skin tones came out very well. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with this piece as far as the production goes. So um, when Warrior came out, I thought they did a good job on his skin. So I was pretty optimistic that they would hit this one on the head and they did. I think pretty, pretty nice. So let's move on. We're going to talk production quality. All right, you saw quickly the old school torso and I'll show you that right away. Uh, but I will mention the statue, very easy to assemble. The ring post is a separate piece. It just fits over this groove here on the pedestal. It is held in place with a magnet so you know exactly where it goes. Um, but if you're gonna pick up the statue up, definitely take that off first. The ropes, turnbuckles, just plug into the post. The bottom ones go under his feet. The top ones just rest on his boots. Um, now, if you're asking why in the blue hell did they do this kind of cheesy rock logo in the front, well, don't worry about that because it just comes right off. It's just a magnet connection. There's no holes left behind there on the ring post, so you could display it or not, whatever you choose. Uh, the other wrestlers in the line so far have their logo sculpted right onto the base. So um, if you want to be consistent, you might want to have that on there. Um, now, the uh, key feature of this statue is to swap out torsos. So I'll show you that now. You just slide this guy off like that. He comes off nice and easy. And then you've got the old school rock right here. And you can see the metal peg just slots into a hole. on his body, slides down nice and easy, and you've instantly transformed your statue into the old school rock right here. Um, but one issue uh, with statues that have swatched out torsos, I find one of the two usually looks a little bit awkward with the legs. And for me, it's this one here. It doesn't quite look as natural as the modern torso does to me, um, but I do love the upper body sculpt. You can see he's not quite as lean and shredded as the modern rock and definitely not as he is now. He's like a bodybuilder now. Um, this is his old school physique. He was a little bit chubby, a little bit more plump. Still in good shape though. I mean, you can tell here, huge chest, big arms and everything. It looks good. Uh, um, the portrait on this guy, I mean, you can tell it's the rock, obviously. The people's eyebrow, the sideburns. He's got hair on this one. Um, but it's not quite as photorealistic as the other one. My friend Marco probably put it best saying it's a little bit more of a caricature style almost. Um, whereas the other one is, as I said, it's right off the screen. But if this was all we got, they didn't give us the modern version, I still would have bought this because I think this still looks pretty good. All right, so let's talk or let's uh, look at some of the close-up details of this torso here. See, I, as I said, I love that upper body sculpt. Very realistic looking. Great job there. The people's eyebrow. Now here's the tattoo on his arm. You can see closely there's a little etching there where that decal or decal was supposed to go. And they missed the mark just a little bit on mine. But um, you have to look really close for that. There you go. He's about to lay the smack down. Looking at all those jabronis out in the crowd there. It's still a pretty good portrait. Another shot of it there. Again, look at the veins and the arms. Pretty great job on the physique. Here's the gap around his waist. This is the one issue with this torso. There is a little bit of a gap between the top of his shorts and his waist on this one. On the modern one, uh, it's, it's pretty good, pretty tight fit. But here, like from this angle, especially where I'm sitting, I'm almost looking right down his shorts right here. Um, so I don't know if they're all going to be like that or if it's just mine that's like that. Uh, but if, if it is, you might want to display this torso up a little bit higher. So then you're not looking down his pants or maybe you want to look down his pants. I don't know. But um, just keep that in mind. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, production quality on this piece is pretty good uh, overall. Aside from that, a little bit of a gap there. I don't really have anything to complain about. It's easy to put together. It's well packaged, um, you know, nice compact base, easy to display. You got the two torsos. I might have wanted another little mini base to display both torsos. That would have been pretty neat. Um, but other than that, really nice production from PCS. They did a really nice job. So let's wrap up the review right now.
All right, I'm just going to throw a quick montage up on the screen as I talk about the piece here. The Rock from PCS. As you can see, I think it looks fantastic. It turned out really, really well. Look at the tattoo, the portrait, the skin tones, the skin texture, the vein work, the muscle detail. Of course, you get the swap out torso to transform from old school to modern as you like. Look at that people's eyebrow. Of course, you had to have the people's eyebrow, of course. And then look at the portrait again. And that's basically right off the television screen. It looks incredible. Amazing job, I think, especially on the sculpt. Uh, the casting work, excellent there as well as it brings out all the skin texture. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty pleased with this piece. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the review, um, I have a top three characters that I want to see made. I'm not including Hulk Hogan. I think that's a given. If they're allowed to do Hulk Hogan, he's going to get made. That's a gimme. So other than Hogan, who do I like to see made? And I'll start off with Bret the Hitman Hart. Of course, you can't have a WWE line without the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. So he's number three on my list. At number two, can't have Bret Hart without HBK, Shawn Michaels, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, I love his entrance music too. It always makes me laugh every time I see that uh, or hear that when he's coming in the ring. Um, really great wrestler. And um, number one on my list, Macho Man, Randy Savage. I think you got to have Macho Man. And he was mentioned in the Facebook group too. They're, they're thinking about it. I think it's a must-have. Uh, and this is the Macho Man what, that I would want, the, the old school Macho Man. I don't want Macho King. I don't want the cowboy hat and the, the long tasseled jacket. I want this version of the Macho Man right here. That would be number one on my list. I would buy that day one for sure. So there you have it. The Rock from Premium Collectibles Studio. Give you a quick 360 of the old school port or torso there. I'm pretty pleased with this piece. I'm really happy. I'm going to put him beside my Ultimate Warrior happily. And I will uh, anxiously await The Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin and whoever they decide to make after uh, after that. So I see a couple of the comments here. Macho Man, Daniel Bonilla, of course. He's got to get made. Triple H, uh, he'd be great too. Um, Kane, Jeff Hardy, all these guys. I would, I would like to see them all get made, of course. But I gave you my top three. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that live review of The Rock from PCS. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys soon.